Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Uh, I'm legit excited to do this, Nathan. I'm hopeful this will be a fun video to watch. This is from one of our, really one of the most amazing patrons that we actually have. Her name mm -hmm. is Celeste. She's the best. She's so, I don't know how to say it, like she's so calm, cool, doesn't like really comment on anything, doesn't even, she never, I don't think she ever comments on the videos that she pays for. You know what I mean? Like, like oh, our, yeah. our the way we yeah. like yeah. she. I think she enjoys what we do. Mm -hmm. She gives us the big requests, concerts. She pays for the full concerts, uh, the mm -hmm. One Direction uh, movies, uh, the big stuff, and we do it. And then she, <laughs> we never hear from her. Then she gives us another one. So Celeste, I think what's, what are you supposed to say? Thank because you. Because she's well, an I, angel. She's an she's angel looking out for us. Yeah. So Celeste, you are the best, and thank you so much for your. Obviously, your financial support, uh, we appreciate it. And just when we think we've seen everything there is about One Direction, Celeste <laughs> is like, no, you haven't. I've got something else for you. <laughs> this is all I know about this video. There's a few people watching us right now mm -hmm. who haven't seen this video as well. The individual who made this video, it's from their YouTube. It's Their name is the One Direction Historian. So they, they've classified themselves as a One Direction Historian. So they probably are huge fans and mm -hmm. or they... Not only are they huge fans, but they're able to piece together stuff. Mm. I guess mm. I haven't mm. watched the video at all. I've only seen a couple frames. That's it. Mm. I just, just I don't. I, I saw a couple of frames because I wanted to make a thumbnail for the video. So, yeah. but I haven't heard her talk. I don't know what she sounds like. I don't know who she is. I don't know what her real name is. And the video itself doesn't have like fifty thousand. I would think something like this would have seventy thousand, hundred thousand views. It actually doesn't, considering. Like her title of her, of her channel is the One Direction Historian. Uh, it only has like four and a half thousand views at the time of this recording, hmm. which is not a lot. And we're tag stupid. Her. When we're finished, we I, should tag I, her. I do. Yeah. I did tag her. Actually, I tagged her that we were doing this recording today. Ew. Yeah. And, and it's not a slight on her. I'm just. I find that surprising, considering our stupid channel when we do videos gets quite a bit more than that and we don't even do anything we just go that was a good song anyway so <laughs> <laughs> so i i'm hopeful that she's what she's done is she's pieced together something now what she's pieced together nathan i'm not even sure all i know celeste this is what she does too she just goes here's the thing i want you to react to here's the money for it bye <laughs> she doesn't even tell us <laughs> the title of this is 1d history zane leaves and zooey fights yeah, you know, Zooey, so, like Zane, Zane and, Louis. and Louis. Yeah, is that so? Is they that have the, fights. The shipping of Zane and Louis. Well, I don't know. Is that them shipping or is that them just fighting? Their their name is combined. So we're gonna find out. So we're gonna take the journey. So a lot of this is really just a watch along. We're not gonna obviously comment on every sentence she says, but we'll try to mm -hmm. break it up as when information is given to us. We'll be like, holy crap, let's we'll talk about that piece of information. Obviously, mm -hmm. in the chat live right now, folks, don't get ahead of the video. So if you've seen the video. And you, and you say to us, oh, no, she explains X, Y, Z later in the video. This is what she says. Don't do that to us during this live recording. Please let us do the journey with the video or uh, sorry, as the video is presented, the information, because we will say things that maybe will be explained later. OK. Mm, yeah. I, OK. I think people are generally well cognizant of that. Yeah. Generally. So I'm speaking to the two or three that aren't. So it only takes one person. OK. okay. All, right. All right. I'm not trying to insult those who are wonderful and they never spoil anything. Oh, OK. Oh, that's the friendship name. So, like, you and I would be Raithen or Raithen. Yeah, Raithen's Nyan. good. Raithen. No, it has to be Raithen. Raithen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to have more of my name. Raithen. More of me. Yeah, Raithen. Nan. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here we go, folks. Uh, here she is. I don't know her name, but she's a one D historian. She looks very cheerful. Mm -hmm. And it starts like this. Here we go. Hi, everyone, and welcome back. This is One D Historian, and today we are talking about. Oh no. Today we are talking about the Zane versus Louis fight in 2015. Oh, now before we begin wow. today, I want to advise you to go get your favorite snack, favorite drink, maybe even something cuddly in a blanket. This is going to be a rough one. Let's get started. Now odds are you have seen this video before. Of weeks now, but right you don't really believe it, so you get. Hey, Nate, just so you know, every time you talk, I can't hear you. Oh, I, just, I can't hear you over the the video. So what I just saying? said I got my favorite snack. My dog's okay. sitting back behind me. We're good okay. to go. Okay. So she says everyone's seen this video. We have, of course, she's speaking. 
she's not really speaking to people like us. She's speaking to One Directioners, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is some sort of video here. Let's see this here. Here, when you see like everybody stood round together and singing with such great legends that have you know done it over the years, and you know the people that he brought up who've been involved in the cause, it's just take another look. So, uh, anything that stood out from the day while you've been kind of waiting, you've been waiting around. Um, one thing we did realise today is that we have been singing one line of the song wrong for years, but we didn't actually. Been any kind of funny moments or anything like standing there because obviously you know we've known we were doing this for a couple of weeks now, but you don't really believe it till you get here and you see like everybody stood round together and singing with such great legends that have you know done it over the years and you know the people that he brought up who've been involved in the cause. It's just so huge for to think that we're here today doing our little bit. Now, back in the day, Harry was a crier, and he was notorious for having no poker face. So even oh, if somehow totally you don't pick I was up staring at Zane. Voice, strangely... I was I looking was at like... both of them. I was looking at both, but yeah. I was, like, looking at Zane. I was like, man, Zane looks pretty good with his hair like that. Yeah, I, like it was it. Look, yeah, I don't think I've seen the hair like that. Mm -hmm. He was, uh, long hair Zane would be, what was the name? Was... Uh, so let's see what she says about Harry here subdued yeah. behavior harry is a huge clue that something here is very wrong and sure enough something that. was just a couple after this interview one direction's facebook page announced that zane would be leaving the band in the middle of a world tour so that he could quote be a normal 22 year old and for a while leading up to his departure there had been a couple of very worrying signs that zane's mental health was in trouble and we all love the way that Prince Hair Zane looks. But <laughs> Prince, Prince Hair Zane, Zane happened Prince during Hair this Zane. time. And people who There you go, we got an answer. That was his nickname. Prince Hair Zane. <laughs> <Yep>. Okay. Who <laughs> <laughs> are experiencing psychological turmoil tend to be very protective of their hair. Only oh. during this time, Zane started losing a very obvious amount of weight as if he, he wasn't thin. eating. A lot of us noticed mm. these things when they were happening, but they became even more obvious after the fact that they were cries for help. You should note that throughout the history of One Direction, Zane had always struggled with anxiety problems. He struggled with anxiety even before the band existed. Does anyone know where Zane is? I guess you don't want to do it. Because I hate dancing, and I've never done it before, and I just feel like an idiot on the stage trying to dance with other people that are clearly better than me, and I just feel like an idiot not doing it. He was, by his own admission, shy, and even in interviews, he tended to stay quieter than the other boys, only answering questions if he was asked directly, as if he was worried that he would say something foolish and embarrass himself. We're in America as well, while we're in uh, uh, Wuzu, Miami. Um, Malibu. Malibu. Malibu, 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 sorry. Baby. Just as well, you got the videos He's really hurting himself, eh? Yeah, I wonder why. I mean, obviously, we're not therapists or doctors, but I'd be curious. I mean, we all have our personality disorders <laughs> at the end of the day you have mm -hmm. them i have them whatever they might be but his is definitely yeah it could be yes yeah, definitely shy them but it's, it's the maybe the fear of being wrong right there he he was wrong mm -hmm. and instead of maybe i mean you and i probably we, we laugh it off for like no it's malabami mm -hmm. that's my favorite place to go like you play with it you just right. go with it but he felt you know sheepish and oh man i'm so stupid yeah mm-hmm yeah, well, I definitely identify with it. Like, while well, you and I are in similar ways, have different things that, you know, get us kind of, <laughs> when, when people point it out, we're like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, we, we kind of do the same thing. Oh, wow, well, yeah, yeah. Nobody likes to be wrong, that's for sure. Yeah. Nobody likes, I love being wrong. <laughs> Konnichiwa. Pretty good. I didn't learn anything in Japan. <laughs> There were also several times in the band's <laughs> touring history where funny. at the very last minute right before the show, Zayn did not come out to perform, citing that he was ill, which was most likely stage fright or a panic attack. So when that fateful Facebook announcement was made, <sighs> everyone lost their minds. Oh. I don't think I'm ever going to remember that day without a weight in my chest at the memory. It was easily the darkest day in our fandom. As you can imagine, everybody online was scrambling, making like a thousand tweets a minute that was just exclamation points and capital letters and key smashes but just as many people were saying nothing at all and for a fandom like ours that was constantly active the silence was a little bit terrifying it's interesting you know yeah i mean we hear but we know about the the leaving but to be there in real time if you were a one direction fan like we've act well i've been fans of bands where singers left band members left it's it's heartbreaking yeah. you're like one of my favorite bands, as you know, Nathan, is Guns N' Roses back when I was a teenager. So we're old. So when I was a teenager mm. and when Izzy left the band in 92, it broke my heart. You know, mm. I didn't have the Internet to, to say anything to anybody. It was just something I suffered alone with me and my brothers. But 
you know, and a couple of friends to talk about it with. And I suspect I probably even talked to you about it. But the point is, is that when he left, because he was my favorite member of that band, I was like, God, that sucks. Mm-hmm. And so I, I kind of I get the feeling when your uh, when your favorite band gets broken up or they mm-hmm. cease or they it's always weird. The next steps in a band's career when that happens. So, yeah. But th- at this time, people had the Internet. They, they had the right. Internet. So there's like places to go for consolation basically Co- well consolation plus all the uh cons- not i hate cons- not the word conspiracy but all the theories that were being said and spread why what, what yeah. i think it's just i think it's just everyone's trying to piece mm-hmm. together the signs and i didn't see this coming or what yeah interesting mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. now even though this was the worst time in the history of our fandom over the next few days it was also weirdly the most united we had ever been as a fan yeah, okay exactly because everyone was saying. feeling the exact same sense of devastation the band members uh, leaving things. what <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you Tim, <laughs> did you hear One Direction is breaking up? <laughs> she just told me. <laughs> Hold the phone. Are you Wait. <laughs> what? When? Zane is leaving the band. Zane. <laughs> Zane is. Time out. Wait a minute. I can't do the prom- I can't do this premiere. <laughs> Even casual fans of the band felt. Well, he's. God, he's kind of having fun with it a little bit, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love Kevin Hart. Yeah, he was, he was having some fun with that. I mean, it's probably naturally that was kind of crazy, but he's like, "What? That's crazy!" Like my favorite band, no way. <laughs> that's a classic that's because even Kevin though- Hart reaction. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> All good comedians work with it. That's good. Yeah. The other four boys said that they would continue on as One Direction. It wasn't the end of One Direction. It was the end of the One Direction that we all knew and yeah, loved. Fair enough. And we weren't naive. Zane's departure had, for the first time in the band's history, reminded all of us that One Direction had an expiration date. Yeah. We were also united in the fact that. See, we said that too, Nathan. We said that there's no way, as much as everyone, they're going to come back together. We said during our reaction stages that. They can't survive. So I'm, I'm glad she's saying this. That the, they, if you're a true fan, you'd have to admit back then. There's no way they're going to last for 30 years. No, they had an expiration. I like that. They had an expiration date. That was an yeah. interesting way of putting that. Yeah. Yeah. At first, most fans weren't mad at Zane for leaving. Heartbroken? Yes. Mad at the situation? Yes. But not mad at Zayn. It wasn't a secret that Zayn had always struggled with the immense fame of the band. So when the departure announcement said that he was leaving because he really wanted to be normal, we all supported it. We knew he had been miserable. And like I've said in all my other videos, Directioners have always only just wanted all the boys to be happy. Were there a lot of people who were mad at Zayn and kept saying things like, Oh, how could he do this to us? (laughs) Yes, of course. Mm. But for once, most of us weren't actually fighting with these fans. We took time to validate their hurt and acknowledge the way that they were feeling. But we patiently and gently explained to them that this is what Zane needed. That he couldn't go on living the way that he had been, and him leaving the band was a lot better than the inevitable alternative. There was so much compassion between Directioners during this time. In fact, one of the cool things that we did was a movement called Carrot for a Day, where basically we suspended any judgment against fans for acting like they were new and cringe and just kind of encouraged everybody to tweet like they were finding One Direction for the first time. Just so that we were new and cringe. That was us. Oh, yeah. Somebody (laughs) gave us a carrot for for the day. (laughs) Yeah. uh, People have been judging us for a long time. (laughs) <laughs> we're cringe. We're not new anymore. We're just still cringe. I, I'm we're cringe. cringe. Yeah. You're not cringe, Nathan. It's me. I'm <laughs> yeah, cringe. You no, know, we're cringe. Trust me. <laughs> we could relive the old happy days. And a lot of us started feeling really guilty. Like the fans were responsible for Zane's unhappiness because... It was your fault, fans. You ruined Zane's life. <laughs> <laughs> we had made them so popular that management was just constantly overworking them. So we felt <laughs> guilty. We felt angry with management for always overworking the boys. We felt scared about what did this mean for One Direction as a band. And we were in mourning. And we felt really sensitive to the hurt of the other boys because it became extremely obvious how hurt the other boys were too. You can see that in all the shows and interviews that the boys did in the days following Zane's departure. Zane was their friend and he just left them. It had to hurt. And that hurt turned to total betrayal very soon after, thanks to what? Naughty Boy. Who's Naughty Boy? Who's Naughty Boy? What? Who is he? 
I don't know what he's up to nowadays, but back in 2015, <clears throat> Naughty Boy was a producer who was pretty well known for this Sam Smith song that you may have heard before. And towards the end of 2014, it was reported that Zayn was in the studio working with Naughty Boy. Now this didn't really worry anyone because very often during the 1D days there were rumors that the boys were working on solo projects with other artists or songwriters or producers and every time they would be like, oh no, is this the end of 1D? Is this person going solo? And it never amounted to anything. So no one really worried when it was said that Zayn was working in the studio with Naughty Boy. And remember that in the One Direction Facebook post that- That's a stupid name. Naughty Boy? That's a stupid name. Oh, why? announced Zayn's departure from the band, Zayn cited that the reason he was leaving was because he wanted to be a normal 22-year-old for a bit. And so no one had any sort of suspicion or inkling that he had left to start a solo career because we knew Zayn always struggled with being famous. So if he told us he was leaving because he didn't want to be famous anymore, we had no reason not to trust him. And we also had no reason not to trust him because, like, we're the fans. Why would Zayn lie to us? So anytime people would suggest like, oh, he's gonna start a solo career, we shut it down immediately because we are like, if that was it, Zane would have told us. Zane would never have lied to us about why he was leaving the band. He would have told us the truth. Hmm. Now, yeah, I, I get why people would think, yeah, I get why people would think that. Um, but Zane doesn't hold the many explanations, number one. Number two, being a solo artist is different than being in a band. Mm -hmm. And there's probably even a part of him that knew that he would not be as big necessary as he was with the boys and so he could be himself and if you think about it he could fail or succeed on his own at least it would be it would be his own failure or his own success and that and that in a way kind of normalizes your life that you're not beholden to another group of four people yeah yeah i see i i, I see both sides of this but i i tend to agree with you on this one and he doesn't he, people don't owe fan celebrities don't owe anyone else that they they're humans too they just do what they want to do too and mm -hmm. enjoy what you want to enjoy but i i yeah i know the and keep in mind and this is me speaking to these fandoms they were young and i'm not saying that's bad i'm saying there were a lot of the fan base at the time were very young people mm -hmm. and so they're going to be very emotive and think with their feelings more than just with their heads that and even zane was young but my goodness 22 nathan is so young <laughs> mm -hmm. i thought i knew everything at 22 i now that i'm older <laughs> i I didn't know any. I was an idiot at 22. <laughs> I'm an idiot now. So whatever yeah. I am now, just <laughs> multiply that by two or three back, you know, 25 years ago. Oh yeah. So picture this. It is five days after Zayn leaves One Direction. Most fans are still in mourning. Some are still in denial. Everybody's still heartbroken and unsure about what's happening and what's going to happen next. And Naughty Boy retweets a tweet that says, Zotti will Zotti. rise. Oh, what is thing. Zotti, you ask? Excellent yeah. question. Zotti, Zotti is another portmanteau. We really like these in this fandom. That mashes up Zane's name with Naughty Boy's name. Allegedly. Naughty Boy denied that Zotti had anything to do with Zane Malik. Right. And the reason that Naughty Boy publicly denied that Zotti had anything to do with Zayn was because of none other than Louis William Tomlinson. Now, I've talked before in other videos about how Louis's relationship with the fans has always been something very, very special. Anyone that Louis was mad at, the fans would be mad at, and vice versa. <laughs> Louis was always oh. the first to jump in and defend the fans to the media, to defend the fans to any haters. Louis was always having our back, and we always had his. So when Naughty Boy seemed to imply that Zayn was starting a solo career, Louis immediately jumped onto Twitter and defended us against him, calling him inconsiderate and telling him to grow up because he thought Naughty was just trying to make fun of and rile up the fans who were still so upset that Zayn left. Mm. It seemed mm -hmm. that the fans weren't the only ones that Naughty Boy was trying to rile up. When you're getting hate for something you didn't do, a bit of love can go a long way. That's why I retweeted, time will tell the real story, guys. What? What did he retweet, though? What did he retweet? What this is Naughty Boy's tweet. I thought, I thought he posted that... Did, well, he posted did the Zotti. From his account? Yeah. So what did he retweet? I'm confused about the retweet comment. He tweeted Zotti will rise or whatever. Mm -hmm. and that's supposed to be him and Zane. And then and then Louie wasn't happy with that Naughty Boy tweet. And I don't think he's getting hate from Louie. <clears throat> Anyways, it sounds very juvenile here. Let's see what he, let's see what Yeah. Plus as I just want to say oh, this. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. I just want to say this. 
it wouldn't hurt to write in complete sentences. <laughs> well, you got to keep in mind, Nathan, this might have been back when Twitter wasn't so many characters. You only had, they've increased okay, the characters over time. But periods and then capital nope. letters. That, could, that, that still takes characters. I'm not trying to defend his. I'm just saying, to be fair, I'm not saying I hear you. Yeah, I know. I'm putting I, commas I, and then continuing and a comma and then continue. He could put a period yeah. instead of a comma. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> He's just a naughty boy. He doesn't like to do grammars. Oh, so Yana saying that he retweeted the Zadi. So I guess he himself retweeted the very thing that he tweeted. He retweeted it. Okay, whatever. No. Okay. I directly referred to Louis' tweet by saying that time would tell the real story, seeming to imply that there was more to this naughty and Zane solo project than was first assumed. And then somehow a few days later, some mysterious person leaked the demo for Zane's first solo song, I Won't Mind, to YouTube. Now, obviously the fans didn't want to believe it. We didn't want to believe that Zane had lied to us, and we didn't want to believe that he was already, only five days after leaving the band, going solo. Well, some fans began to speculate that the track was actually a rejected song that was meant to go on One Direction's album 4. Mm. This theory was so popular that it even made some mainstream media newspapers. But Louis definitely was not on board with this as he replied to the article asking if it was a joke, which definitely mm. seemed to confirm that this was never meant to be a One Direction song and that Zayn actually had recorded it for some kind of solo project. Now for the rest of the month, mm. Directioner Twitter was kind of in a spiral about the whole thing. It seemed like Naughty Boy was doing exactly what Louis accused him of and was just trying to rile up the fans by tweeting absolute nonsense. And fans were extra sensitive to this because we were starting to come to the conclusion that Zayn had lied to us. Zayn had lied to everybody about why he had left the band. That was becoming obvious. And all of the fans that had stood behind his decision, all of the fans that had defended him, all of the fans that stood up for him and his right to protect his mental health and well-being were suddenly realizing that he had lied to us. And he was really just leaving because he wanted to start a solo career. Even worse, it was starting to become obvious that Zayn had also lied about the reason for him leaving to the other boys. The way that Louis kept tweeting and replying to Naughty Boy made it seem pretty clear that Louis was under the impression that Naughty Boy was lying and that Zayn was absolutely not starting a solo career. I need you to imagine two things for me. First, the sense of betrayal that Directioners felt at being lied to after we stood up for this person that we loved so much and trusted so much. And second, how utterly conflicted we felt. Directioners always sided with the boys, but if one boy betrayed the rest, Whose side were we supposed to be on? This is the divide. We've seen the divide last to this day. I think it's still there. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. I don't know what her final thesis will be with this, uh, but she's doing a very good job, obviously, for us uh, who aren't as familiar. We we understand a lot of the pieces of this. We know the history to a degree, but mm -hmm. she's obviously lived it herself as a fan. So for her to, you know, she's explaining. I, I think pretty well. Everyone's journey is different, of course, but generally, I think she's explaining quite well the the feelings of uh, the the. Directors were feeling in real time at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I'm. I'm just like I don't know if we would have been able to watch this uh, even a year ago. I, no, I no, the, no. We've Celeste picked we've, the right time. Yeah. First of all, we've come around a long ways with Zane and what mm -hmm. we understand about Zane. Um, I think we would have been kind of like worked up about Zane from this video, and now I'm kind of like I'm putting it into perspective and going like, yes, but there's there's parts here. I hope that she, well, there's a lot more to this video, so. Yeah, we're t just a third of the way through. So, yeah, no, this is good. Uh, but this is titled again, Zane Leaves and Zooey's, Zooey Fights. So, Zooey fights. I, so does Louis and Zane get out of here? Don't answer the question. Because mm -hmm. I don't recall, do you recall any kind of fighting between the two that you're aware of? Maybe it's something that people haven't told us about yet. Yeah, That's, that's my guess, yeah. It only got worse because a few days later, Naughty Boy tweeted out this picture of he and Zane working in the studio. Louis at this point knew all about the feud that had been happening for the last few weeks between Naughty Boy and the Directioners, and so he hit back with a tweet in our defense, knowing that Naughty Boy was only tweeting pictures with Zayn to rile us up. He indirected the picture, saying, Remember when you were 12 and you used to think those Mac filters for your pictures were cool? Ha ha. Some people still do. Ha. Zayn directly replied Louis's tweet and said, Remember when you had a life and stopped making <gasps> bitchy comments oh, about no. mine? Oh, wow. <laughs> oh no oh no 
So who tweeted that other tweet? Was that Naughty Boy or Naughty Boy? Yeah. So, but no, uh, but then Zane defended Naughty Boy's filter a little bit there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, I, like Zane's like, I've had enough of your tweets. Oh wait, even was though that Luke... tweet was that last tweet directed at Zane? Yeah, no, that was Zane talking to Louis. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you miss is... that? I I did miss that. Yeah. So now, because Louis's been cut. So I, as I understand it, Louis's been sort of like poo pooing on for for the fans. Say no, no, Zane's not doing this. Zane's not working with this naughty boy guy. That's not a rejected song from Wonder. Well, you're kind of like not crapping on Zane. He's been kind of crapping on Naughty Boy. But because mm-hmm. Zane has been working with Naughty Boy, Zane now came up and said, "Hey, Louis, remember when you had a life? Like, leave us alone." Type dialogue. Yeah. Oh come on, Zane. We love Louis. Don't do that. Don't don't make us. Come on, don't don't divide us, man. Don't divide us. There. Oh, oh, there you go. We're bigger now. Yeah, look how big we are. Okay, thanks, guys. Um, all right. I did it. <laughs> no, but they they pointed it out, Nathan. So I was oh, thanking I the uh, the watch for pointing it out. <laughs> they used they used the force. They got me to do it. Yes, but I will do your bidding. Oh. Up until this point. Zane had stayed out of it. Yeah, I'm Up until this point, Louis had been very careful to only talk yeah. shit about not Gonna follow it, I'm following it. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm get what she's putting down here. Naughty boy, and to not bring Zane into it. But with this tweet, yeah, Zane, Zane brought himself into it yep. and now started a direct fight between him and Louis. Louis This is very public. So think about what it was like for the fan state. It'd be like think about the Beatles if they had Twitter. <laughs> and <laughs> And John calls out Paul on Twitter. That's what is this is like. So think of the yep. heyday of Twitter. Or sorry, the heyday of the Beatles. And Twitter was live well. And John goes, hey, you stop making fun of me. You're talking about me. <laughs> Anyways, no, I don't know. I can't do John later. But the point is, like he, he gets mad at Paul publicly. That, that, mm-hmm. this was, mm-hmm. So now the fans are reading this like, uh, how do we feel about this? <laughs> and you're, mm-hmm. you're going to have people team Zane. And you're going to have people team Louie. And you're going to have people who like, I don't know what to do. Yeah. He didn't respond to Zane, and he and Naughty Boy kept throwing barbs at each other. But Louis never answered this tweet, oh, and Louis never mm. said anything about Zane specifically. And I think this just goes back to Louis always trying to protect us. As mm. soon as Zane tweeted this, Directioners had a meltdown, and I think Louis saw how upset we were that he and Zane were fighting, and he didn't want to make it worse. Mm. So he didn't say anything. And Directioners feeling immensely betrayed that after everything, this was the thing that Zane was going to say. This was the thing he was going to talk about. He was going to throw shots at Louis, who had been standing up for us for the last six weeks while we were in our grief and turmoil and confusion? No, sir. So fans obviously flipped on Zane as a result of this, telling Zane that he was acting like an asshole, that he was a liar, that he was a dick, and that he shouldn't be treating Louis this way after they'd been friends for so long. And Zane tweeted out acting like he was confused, saying, why is everybody mad at me? I'm just defending myself. So as a direct result of that tweet, the fandom completely fractured. Like Some fans <laughs> agreed that Zane was just defending himself and said he had a right to defend himself against Louis being petty. Well, the rest of us weren't so generous. Before Wendy even started their hiatus, Zane started his solo career. And the rest of the boys were constantly asked about this situation in interviews and whether or not they had talked to Zane and whether or not they were still friendly with Zane. As I've said a lot before, I do not know any of the boys personally, and I want to be respectful of the fact that I don't know everything that happens in their personal lives, and I can only talk about what we know publicly. So I don't know if Louis and Zane ever made up, if they ever apologized to one another, or if they are friends today. What we know publicly is that Louis's first solo performance after his mother's oh, yeah. tragic death. So even we know this. Even yep. we know this. Mm-hmm. Zane was the only one that didn't show up at that performance. Yeah. Louis invited all the boys to be there in order to support him emotionally, including Zane. He invited Zane, and Zane never showed up. Meanwhile, where did the fandom stand with all this? Most of the fans felt like Zane had lied to us, because in the Facebook post announcing his departure, he said he was leaving to be a normal 22-year-old, and then it seemed as if he was starting a solo career immediately after leaving. But in an interview that he did a couple years later, Zane implied that the quote that was attributed to him was never actually spoken by him, saying that it was something that the lawyers wrote on his behalf. At the time, us fans had no reason to suspect that he didn't say what the Post said he did. 
which is the reason we felt like he was lying to us. And after Zane made that statement, it threw into turmoil everything that directioners thought we knew about the situation. Well, I, look, uh, I can almost like I don't think this, <laughs> this is tricky. I can mm -hmm. see the lawyers drafting the message of his departure easily. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And just saying, look, Zane, you were like, so Zane wants to leave. He could have told the band, he could have told management, look, I'm out of here. I, I, whatever, whatever he could have said to them. So the lawyers are like, oh, we got to say something to the public for your departure. Here's the statement. Zane's like, yeah, yeah, yeah whatever. Mm -hmm. Sign Zane. Yeah. But they drafted yeah. it, the PR department. Yeah. I believe, I, I can, but this way, I can believe that's true. Now, I don't know the truth anymore. That, like she's saying, we don't know unless was whatever's publicly given us is what we know. Mm -hmm. But Zane said that the lawyers drafted that. I, I can believe that could very much well be the case that it was a lawyer drafting. Yeah. 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 And just about a month after his fight with Louie, Zane also cut ties with Naughty Boy, mm. telling the producer to stop pretending like they were friends. So if Zane hadn't mm. left the band to be a normal 22 year old and he hadn't left to start a career with Naughty Boy, what on earth was going on? Over the years, Zane has given us several different answers to the question of why he left One Direction. And I'm gonna touch on all of them in this video because I think all of them are relevant and probably played a part in his leaving. Zane can Let me just, just wanna yeah, say this. Of course, this that's why you paused here. it. Because I, I feel like, like if this goes into like a like ridiculous level of analyzing everything that he did, I feel like I'm watching this play out. I'm going like, okay, it was an awkward get out of, uh, one direction it was an awkward like am i gonna go and do this little project with naughty boy and realize oh this guy's nothing like what i thought it was going to be like cut ties with him and now zane's feeling probably super rejected and super like alienated because of that whole fallout and louis and blah 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 and so what would, like what would if it were me what would i do i would hide for months on end okay. yeah To his first solo interview after leaving the band with Zane Lowe in November of 2015, and this interview was described as a bombshell. Zane took the opportunity to explain his behaviors over the previous few months and explore on camera for the first time his feelings about life and One Direction. And he said a couple things that were doubly hurtful. Hurtful because he said them, but also hurtful because we were just learning that he was feeling this way. As I've said in just about every single one of my videos, Directioners have only ever wanted the boys to be happy. And the idea that Zane had been so vociferously unhappy Ooh, within the band hmm. was kind of heartbreaking. And maybe the most hurtful revelation of all? My heart's already breaking, baby, go on a twist Ooh, wow. So the first reason why Zane left One Direction was that he never wanted to be in One Direction. And it That's, you know what? And this is me defending Zane. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Yep. That's okay. To, that's his feeling. That that he is totally allowed to feel that way. Well, think about the situation that got him there. It wasn't yeah. like he yeah. went and and like worked really hard to try and you know right. run this band that he was really proud of. It was kind of it a started in somebody's garage. It started in somebody's garage. And yeah, a bunch of buddies getting together. And, yeah, you know. That's not the situation at all. It's, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I appreciate his honesty, and uh, I, I'm team Zane on this point. Reason number one, I'm team. That's, he has every right to feel that way, you know? Yeah. He, yeah. He, he, yeah. It always made him unhappy. All things considered, though, Zane stayed very respectful to the other boys in this bombshell interview, never insulting any of them or calling mm -hmm. them out for things that they had done in the past, even though he and Louie had so recently had such a public fight. But it didn't stay that way for long. In an oh. interview with Us Weekly, okay. Zane said that while he and the boys sometimes communicated with one another, they obviously weren't as close as they used to be. And specifically, he said this. Now, fans were very oh, quick so with video what compilations yeah. and collections of... Okay. It's so hard to go back in time because this is such a long video. Let me see if I can do it. 17, 18 is where we're right now. Okay, there we go. Go, go. You just have to click it. Uh, Zane on his relationship with Harry Styles. To be honest, I never really spoke to Harry, even when I was in the band. Again, okay. They're co-workers. Like, <laughs> I don't know if that's Well, I think show. everyone just thinks that everyone gets along. There's, what, five, five boys, right? Yeah, so... Mm. Uh, 
that's five people, five different personalities. Some people like, mm-hmm. as you know, you like what well, you've worked with people during your teaching days. I worked with many people in my Navy days. Like, of course, there's just some people you're going to get along with and, and connect with and some that you don't, but you have to work together. They just work together. Yeah. Uh, again, some of the bands that we enjoy, even with those, those bands have been together for 20, 30 years, you always hear there's separate tour buses and, you know, it, it, yeah, like sometimes you're just not best friends with the people you work with. Well, I think it would be more of a bombshell if it was something, to be honest, I never really liked Harry that much anyway. Like, that's a bombshell. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't speak didn't to him while him. I was in the band. Yeah, he didn't speak very much generally. And Harry is the kind of person that's just like, hey, over here, look at the thing. Yeah. Da, 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 da. And so to to say that it feels like, eh, it makes sense. But again, <laughs> to the young fans, who might, no offense to the young fans who haven't, live life a little bit as an adult you know to, they've uh, idealized real, their yes. life as like right. they're all these great friends that love each other and right. do everything together and yeah they're just guys in a band and they yeah they do their performance they go home they don't want to hang yeah. out with each other yeah yeah now, fans were very quick with video compilations and collections of Zayn and Harry moments trying to disprove this statement. But could it have been true? I've pointed out in one of my other videos how back in the early days of the band, there was a strange tension between Harry and Zayn that, if I had to guess, stemmed from the fact that both of them considered Louis to be their best friend and both wanted to be Louis's favorite. Oh, <laughs> Hmm, interesting. But the tension seemed to have faded quite a bit over the years and even nearly dissolved by the time Zane left. So, um, thank you. Eczema Warrior Princess. But please bear in mind that people's emotions are complex and depending on your mood, the color of a memory can swing dramatically. Oh, sure. Yeah, you can think mm-hmm. back on the exact same memory in two different moods, and your resentment and anger would cloud your judgment so that when you look at it in a bad mood, you only think about and remember the bad times. So it is entirely possible that at the time Zayn made this statement, he was feeling so much hurt that to say he and Harry never really talked was true to him, mm-hmm. as hard as that might be to hear. But as you can imagine, the fans didn't like hearing this one bit. And fans who were already... Plus he said it. Like, if he had written it and tweeted and thought really hard, hmm, what should I say about Harry and I? Mm, We didn't really talk much. I'm going to... Oh, yeah. Like, that's that's a very deliberate, but being pushed to like, hey, give me a little soundbite. What do you got to say about Harry? Uh, To be honest, it really didn't talk that much. It's and totally, also, yeah. also what we saw with that physical evidence, so to speak, with those videos, doesn't prove that they talked a lot either. No, <laughs> like no. they're just like around each other. Theatrics and, and sure. you know, keeping the look, we're all good friends. Kind of, yeah, a, they, didn't, they didn't hate each other. There might, there yeah. might have been a, a, an awkward friendship, not a close friendship. He's just saying we didn't talk much about life or our dreams or pains or sorrows. They just they no. worked together. Again, they worked together. And they had some yeah. good times, some boring times, and some, and some uh, irritating times, just like any mm-hmm. relate working relationship. But they didn't talk about their moms or their families or their futures or yeah, yeah. That was probably done with Louis. I could see them doing that with Louis. Yeah, yeah. And everybody wants to be Louis' favorite. I, I get it. Oh, so I was saying, yeah. everyone, everyone wants to be Louis' favorite. Of course, of course. Yeah. Pain. We're now angrier. And fans were angry because he did this interview around the exact same time as an interview wherein he said that he hated One Direction's music (laughs) and that it was generic as fuck. (laughs) Fans perceived this statement as an insult on the boys as a whole. And as I've talked before, the fans always get very defensive of anyone who's insulting the boys, even when the person doing so is one of the boys. Again, Mm. uh, nothing new. Uh, Like You and I have been in this business a long time listening to music, watching bands break up and dissolve. And you always get... It's happening right now. So I won't say who right now. I'll talk to you later mm-hmm. about it. But yeah, it's, it's people look again because you're talking about you're looking back with those like I wasted my time with these guys. I got something better to do. And oh, that was garbage. Yeah. Zane's not the first person to leave a band to have some crappy things to say about the band. I'm just saying that mm-hmm. this happened before and it'll happen again. <laughs> yeah. It's happening now with bands that I like. Like they, they, they will sometimes you look back at the past with rose colored glasses. Sometimes you look back and say, No. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it made them no, a lot of just, money though. 
Well, I think she's explaining it well. Like, it's, I don't is. think she's necessarily diving down any one rabbit hole or the other. She's just kind of explaining what the emotions were and why. Yeah. Yeah. And Zane had cited this generic as fuck music as the reason he left the band, so that he could have more creative control over the music he put out. So reason number two oh, why Zane left One Direction. He wanted to make music that he actually liked. Again, that's Touching fair. Touching back on us mm -hmm. having our sense of loyalty and protectiveness triggered whenever one of the boys insults the other, what we saw happen with Zane and Harry is exactly what we're seeing happen with Liam and Zane now. Liam's comments were unacceptable. Zane's comments were uncalled for. And both of them were lashing out to hurt someone who had hurt them. And Zane had been hurt for a long time. In an interview he did with Esquire magazine, Zane admitted that towards the end of his time in the band, he'd struggled with an eating disorder. And eating mm. disorders are very common in people who feel like they don't have any control over their own lives. Food is the one thing they for sure can have control over. And it all Nothing will make me sad enough to stop eating. Chunk likes food. <laughs> <laughs> For those who don't know, that's Ryan's nickname. That's my nickname, <clears throat> Chunk. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starving right now. Supper's waiting for me when this is over. But it also works came both ways, oh, by the way. Yeah. Eating disorders work both ways of where course, you feel, yeah. I want control over what I'm eating, so I'm going to eat whatever I want right. as opposed to what, you know, I'm supposed to eat or the right. healthy options. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Yeah. Not that behind the scenes of the band, Zane had been facing an onslaught of racial and Islamophobic oh. abuse. In his autobiography, Zane described that in the days of the band, the media would often make racially charged comments about him, airport security would discriminate against him, and even some fans would send online hate and abuse that was racially and religiously motivated. Oh, terrible, and I can't speak to what extent the boys knew about this abuse, but I can say with certainty that before this book came out, the fans genuinely had no idea how bad the racism and Islamophobia was. As hard as that might be to believe, we did not know how bad it was. The other boys in the band had also always gotten a lot of hate from the media and by fans and non-fans alike online. Harry would receive anti-Semitic sentiments every time he posted about Jewish holidays. Louis was constantly called the F-slur. Niall was Louis? called a car bomber several times. Oh, so he focused oh, on a particular <laughs> part of the boy's identity sure. was nothing new. And we saw it all the time. We just didn't see the behind the scenes hate that Zane got that made his so much harder to endure than what the other boys dealt with. And despite the revisionist history that has been going around mm -hmm. on this issue for the last several years that says the directioners did nothing about the Islamophobia and about the racism Zayn faced, I promise you that when we saw the Islamophobia and racism levied against Zayn, we did do things about it. What little it was possible for us to do. Please try to remember that we were children on the internet yeah, okay. whose only power mm -hmm. in this yeah. situation was in what we could make trend on social media. What is it you wanted us to do? Zane said in his book that no one ever defended him mm. against Islamophobia and racism. My sister, who was probably the biggest Zane girl on earth, <laughs> would come home from school every single day and search Zane's tag on Twitter so that she could fight with people who were mm. being racist or Islamophobic. Okay, okay, okay. Mm. So I know what she's saying. We know what she's saying. She's saying people did, i.e. the fans, they did stick up for Zane. Mm -hmm. I think Zane wasn't talking about the fans. I think he's talking about the band members. I wonder if any of the band members publicly defended the right. signer against him. That's that's my guess. Right. Well, when he, so when Zane says nobody defended me, he's not saying the fans. He's not even saying his family. I think he's specifically saying nobody in the band defended. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that's what he meant. I don't know if she's going to speak to that, yeah. but I don't think he's thinking about the fans in this in that statement because yeah. ultimately they don't. It's something he doesn't care about them, but they're not close to him. The, the, these aren't his brothers, so to speak. Yeah. His, you know, the people that are closest to him during his most popular days. These are the people that didn't say, you know what? People that are saying this about Zane are not one one directioner, so stop doing it. So did anyone do that on publicly? I don't know. I don't know. 
I'm, I find it, I've always found this interesting that people will, and, and I, I get that this is a lot more younger people who are doing, who are probably the people who are doing the racism. I, 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 I can't see like, you know, 40 year old rednecks going on Twitter. And no, going they after, probably didn't even know, you know who, who it's going to be was. young people and <clears throat> no offense right. to young people, but sometimes you're really stupid. Like, and you, you think of the stupidest things to do. You think of like, what's the most hurtful possible thing I could do that would make me feel better and push some of that hurt towards somebody else so that I feel better about myself. It's like the lowest form of, of like therapy that you can possibly find is to do it because it, it, it keeps perpetuating itself. It gets worse. You, oh, I didn't really solve the, so I'm going to try something even more radical and more crazy to see if that f feels my, you know, feelings. And it just, it ends up just snowballing. Yeah. I'm always surprised that people think that somehow that's going to work. <laughs> right. Like, make you feel better, I guess, in the moment, but. Against him. If no one else in the world was defending Zane, my sister definitely was. Me and my friends were always defending Zane and hitting back when we saw racist or Islamophobic abuse. Even my friends who weren't Muslim themselves. Constantly defending him against the media, against haters, and against so-called fans. So the fans did do that. When did fans ever defend Zane against racism? Well, this explains a lot. This, like... When we were on the side, on the side of like, cause we were kind of like put off by Zane at first, right? We didn't, we certainly weren't like, oh yeah, let's watch all the Zane videos. We, were, we even said people like, yeah, don't, don't give us any Zane stuff. Like we were, we were, yeah, we were not anti-Zane. We just weren't pro-Zane. Well, so, we didn't know Zane. You got to keep it like, we no, saw no, 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 just let me finish, let me finish. Oh, my there, fault. There's, there's a lot of stuff that that we said specifically things like, well, there's evidence that he abused his, uh, girlfriend and uh, that really rubbed you the wrong way. I remember that. I mean, and it got under my skin too. And I kind of felt like, yeah, I'm fine to just, we don't need to talk about Zane. And it, um, what I'm saying here is it explains why people sort of came at us in the comments for some of that stuff, because there's a history there of defending Zane of people getting kind of turned off mm -hmm. by Zane and then going like, nah, he's not for me. And that kind of triggers people. I don't mean to make it that it, they were triggered, but that they were yeah, like, right. oh, here we go. Here's some more white guys that are upset mm -hmm. at Zane, you know, and that would get their backs up. I can see why. Yeah. It makes sense to me. Yeah. I agree. I, I mean, I agree. Of course we yeah. were very new. We didn't know what, how would we know? How could we know? Yeah. We didn't know what we didn't know. Like we're still learning things now, you know, two years later. So yeah. people had 10 years to learn this history. We had a month, two videos. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. at the time he just looked like, Hey, look, he's the standoff quiet. I'm too cool for this kid. And that's how he came off not knowing the no. whole history. So yeah. No. Is vitriol. Well, after a song called Zane Did 9 11 got released, fans started bringing posters to every single concert that declared Zane is not a t as well as we created a petition to get the yeah, song removed from the iTunes store and spent days making our disapproval of the song trend worldwide on Twitter. And when American talk show host Bill Maher made these disgusting statements about Zane on his show, and where were you during the Boston Marathon? Oh, <laughs> sorry, that's terrible. Fans sorry. once again took to Twitter and trended <laughs> respect for Zane for days worldwide, as well as we made another petition demanding that the host apologize for his Islamophobic comments. I don't say these things to invalidate Zane's feelings because it very likely felt true to Zane that no one was standing up for him because against the entire systemic racism machine, the hate was probably so loud as to drown out the voices of those who were trying to help. Well, what about the other one, D-Boys, his so-called friends? What was their excuse? The boys have talked before about how their management forbade them from talking about religion, race, or politics because it was deemed too controversial and their public relations team was worried it might hurt their career. Yeah, you know, you know, you know, it's funny. It's not going to hurt their career. It's going to hurt their, the pockets of these. Other. Look, I agree to a degree. Mm -hmm. Like this is where it gets tricky. Like at the end of the day, 
if Harry or any of the boys, well, you know, any of the five guys, they want to talk about whatever they want, they should be allowed to. Now, it will, it could hurt their career. And there's some artists mm-hmm. that I do enjoy. I won't say any names that I don't necessarily agree with their politics, but I don't want them to shut up about it. They have every right to talk how they want. That's their right as a human. They might lose fans or they could gain fans. People could say, oh, I had no idea. So-and-so felt that way. I kind of like them now. Or so-and-so feels that way. I don't like them now. So, but management is like, oh, shh, 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 don't say, don't say anything. So, mm-hmm. by doing that, they're like, by staying silent in a weird way, by staying silent, then people, hey, it, it, I know it's complicated. I have no answers. I don't know anything. I'm just, I'm not a superstar. I'm just saying, I would feel a little bit irritated if I had people breathe in, Ryan, shh, shh, don't talk, don't talk, don't talk. Like, okay, okay, yeah, don't want to upset people. Life is good. Mm-hmm. Life is great. Everything's fun. Everything, uh, no, life is complicated. It's okay. To say, hey, you know, if so, put this way, Nathan, people were talking about you and saying things about you that you were, I won't say anything, some disparaging comments about you. And I knew they weren't Mm -hmm. true. And then Mm -hmm. I had management say, Ryan, that topic that people are saying about Nathan, we don't like it. If you, I think, screw you. He's my friend. Fine. I'm going to wreck my career. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm old school, but he's Mm -hmm. my friend. Like, so complicated, I know, but I would have a hard time not defending you. I'm just saying. Well, I feel at the end of, any you know situation when you look at where it ends up and how it plays out uh integrity wins the day every day time time again and i know that that doesn't ring true for people who who love to say you know the nice guys finish last ha 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 but i actually actually don't believe that i've i've always believed that at, at really at the end when it all plays out your your character counts far more than anything else and so I, I have nothing but respect for people who kind of go down swinging um, with what they believe, even if I disagree with it. I, I have more respect for those people than oh, I do course. for yeah, people yeah, who, yeah. who bend and twist and contort yeah. themselves. And to, it's okay to not agree. You know, I don't know why. Yeah. It's so weird. Why? Again, I, there's some artists that I don't agree with their belief systems, whatever they but I can still enjoy their music. They're not doing anything criminal. They, I just don't yeah. agree with their side of it. Who cares? Let them believe what they anyways. Yeah. Maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just, whatever. Yeah. Bad excuse. Not really. Management contracts within the entertainment industry have always been extraordinarily restrictive. Basically, when you sign a management contract, you are agreeing to follow through with whatever it is that management tells you to do. Otherwise, the contract can be immediately terminated because you breached it. In other words, if they tell you you are not allowed to get a haircut and then you cut your hair, you can lose your entire job as well as your entire reputation within the music industry. Before you think that can't be real, that management has that much control over their lives, consider Halsey. Recently, Halsey was embroiled in a scandal when they revealed that their management wouldn't allow them to release their own song that they owned and created unless they went viral on TikTok first. Halsey is a grown adult with a child. If management has this much control over Halsey, how much more so, especially for a young kid oh yeah, who doesn't surprising. know anything and who's doing what they're told because they are terrified that they will lose their dream job. They're management the told One Direction mm-hmm. they were not allowed to talk about race, religion, and politics. And they had to listen, so they did. Zayn didn't even talk about what he was experiencing while he was experiencing it because he wasn't allowed to. He was suffering immensely in total silence because he wasn't allowed to stand up for himself. Unfortunately, the racial and Islamophobic abuse didn't end when Zayn left the band. Racism and Islamophobia are two features of Western life that are baked pretty deep into the social fabric of predominantly white European descended nations. And that includes being baked deep into the Western mainstream music industry. After Zayn released his music video for his song Like I Would, rapper Azalea Banks went on a racist rant against him, calling him a terrorist, what? among other vile slurs. Wow. Oh my goodness. Have we done anything from Azalea Banks? That sounds familiar. Mm. Whoa, look at the language here. Oh jeez. Wow. Who who is this person? Is that a female or male? No, yeah, I, I want to say female, but just how? <sighs> wow, I can't believe they got away with that kind of language back then. I mean, this is eight years ago, but still. No, I okay. guarantee you those tweets are taken down now. So reason number three for leaving One Direction 
Zane was very often the target of racially and religiously motivated discrimination and hatred, and he did not feel like the support he was given was enough to combat the hate, particularly because public support was heavily restricted by a publicity team. He left mm. because he could no longer bear that abuse. So to sum up, at this time, all of the boys, no matter what age they were on paper, were overwhelmed children who were emotionally stunted by early pop stardom. Zayn struggled with anxiety on top of that. After being overwhelmed by a series of things that especially included racism and Islamophobia, Zayn was forced to leave a situation that was literally starting to kill him. Naughty Boy took advantage of an emotionally compromised child by trying to force him into starting a solo career that he was not ready for, which caused him to betray his friends and his fans. And his fellow bandmates felt that betrayal acutely. His closest friend most likely felt that betrayal the strongest, especially after their fight. And to this day, it seems that neither Louis nor Zayn have been able to process their feelings in a healthy way that allows for forgiveness and closure. Fans struggled to reconcile what we had been told about Zane's departure versus what it looked like to us because we were never told the extent of the racism he faced behind the scenes since he wasn't allowed to talk about it. Fans defended Zane against racism and Islamophobia, but we were kids who didn't know what to do, and what we did turned out to be woefully inadequate. Zayn lashed out and insulted Harry. Liam lashed out and insulted Zayn. Every single person in this entire situation fucked up because every single person in this entire situation was an emotionally immature kid who was hurt and just trying to do their best to manage their feelings in a world that at the end of the day is cold, cruel, and unforgiving of the fame monster. I guess the closest thing that we can come to a happy ending in this mm. was that a couple days ago, Zayn posted a video to Instagram of him singing a One Direction song. <laughs> And Louis liked it. I wasn't just liking it for the sake of oh. liking it. So it was a nice feeling because, you know, in the past he said what he said about the band and I understand some of what he was saying. And those videos, it showed he was reflecting. It showed he was thinking about those mm -hmm. times. So it seems that after all this time, there is still love and support between those boys to whatever extent and in whatever form. So boy, oh boy, do I have an addendum. When I made this video, it was a year and a half ago oh, okay. now. And I never, oh, wow. ever, ever <laughs> thought I would get to say that we have updates on the Zayn and Louis drama, oh, but we have we had so many updates. It is the year oh. of our Lord 2023. What is happening? So to start with, oh. Zayn posted another One Direction song. This time it was a video of himself singing Night Changes. Very oh, slow, very favorite. melodic, very mm. lullaby-ish. Holy night tattoos. Changes, it will never change his voice sounded amazing as always. And only a couple weeks after he posted a video of himself singing Night Changes, Louis Tomlinson added himself singing a cover of Night Changes to his live concert Ooh, set list. There were no it. survivors. <laughs> Oh, the crowd's screaming. <laughs> that screams thing. I know all the words. I will scream. Ah! <laughs> Sorry. I know they're excited, we've, but oh. we've heard some of the, that before. Yeah. I, if they're next to me in the concert, I'm like, okay, that's cool. I'm glad you know every word. I wouldn't mind hearing the artist I paid $150 for. Well, we literally had that happen yes, to us yes, at the five at the five sauce concert. Yes. She was like 20 feet behind us and she was just yelling. Like, we get it. They, number one, they can't hear you. We can. <laughs> we can. They can't. Uh. Especially because it was so clear and so obvious that Louis singing this song was a direct response to Zayn singing it. Sure. Oh, mm -hmm. just pause this because they go fast with you. Oh, there you go. Uh. Louis like Tomlinson he, released Louis's his new album. Very thing. careful about what to say. <laughs> oh, sure. Just, yeah, he doesn't want to upset like anyone. He's pacing it. He's not trying to like, like get overworked up and, oh, it's going to happen. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. Yeah. In the future that fall. And many fans believe that his songs Chicago and or Holding On to Heartbreak are actually about Zayn. Myself included. <laughs> <laughs> One Direction, Zayn Malik and Louis Tomlinson go party in Chicago without girlfriends. Okay. I just, I think, I think in time, I think in time, the thing is we just have to bump into each other. 
I was just saying, oh, it's so fast. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, we already go wrong. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hmm. Uh, we're friends, but I guess. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. We, I remember that one. Uh huh. Um, okay. Mm hmm. And it uh, 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 makes sense to uh, uh, Yep. Oops. We also spoke in an interview during the promo season for that album about Zayn when he was asked. Ooh, are we afraid? You'd have to ask him. Like, there's been numerous times over the last couple of years we did this I've interview we thought about him and hoped he's all right mm. just this year just a couple months ago actually Zayn put out a new single for the first time in ages which was very exciting and in a post announcing the song's existence Liam Payne bandmate Liam Payne commented yeah there you go oh wow and Zayn replied to the comment which caused mm. the entire world to melt down uh Part of promo for his new music, Zayn did an interview with the Call Her Daddy podcast. He gave yet another reason why he left the band, and it was a brand new reason. Oh. There was a lot of politics going on. Certain people were doing certain things, certain people didn't want to sign contracts. So I knew something was happening. So I just got ahead of the curve. If I'm being honest with you, I was like, I'm just going to get out of here. I think this is done. And I just seen it. And I completely selfishly wanted to be the first person to go and make my own record. If I'm being completely honest. Then there was obviously underlying issues like within our friendships too. We'd been together every day for five years and we would got sick of each other. This left a lot of people feeling very conflicted because well, once again, yeah. we're left to wonder what was the yeah. truth? Why did he a bit really of everything. Leave? Was it a for bit a of everything. reason or a career reason or what? And just a couple weeks ago, a fan had posted some footage of Louis performing on tour and Zayn liked the post. It was a fan's mm -hmm. post about Louis and not a Louis post, but it was still notable. Interesting. Yeah. And then in September 2023, just a couple days ago, Louis Tomlinson commented on a post that Zayn made on Instagram, publicly wishing his daughter Kai a happy birthday. Oh, that's mm. so sweet. Significantly, oh, Zane did not respond to or even acknowledge this comment with a like. So as far as we know, mm. Zane and Louie have still not formally made up, and they seem to be playing a game of tag. But it doesn't seem like either of them have apologized yet. It does not seem like they have had that conversation that is long overdue between them to discuss what happened in the past and to start the healing process. All we can do as fans is speculate and wait. And okay. All right. All right, well, I mean, we said obviously our comments throughout. A lot of what we knew, but I like seeing the history in that chronological, well thought out order. Uh, mm -hmm. She did oh, the One Direction historian did a great job. Uh, obviously, a lot of unanswered questions, a lot of speculation. I'm sure we're gonna get tons of comments on our YouTube. <laughs> That's fine. The, those uh, exact uh, letters. I think those exact letters. If you actually. Uh, <clears throat> Give me the correct phonetic what I just did there. I will give you a free song. As the one closest to that. We'll... All right. Uh, yeah, fun stuff. I'm gonna go do it right now. I'm gonna find it. Yeah. Thank you, Celeste. That was. I think that's why she gave it to us. I think she knows what our journey. She's obviously watched mm -hmm. all of our reactions. So this is her way of saying, okay, boys, me and you, we're ready to see this kind of coverage. We understand what's being said. We follow. We can comment. And I think it's great. And I think like all things, yeah, it's complicated. Humans mm -hmm. are complicated. We're complicated. Yeah, I'm complicated with my wife. Like, it's it, and we are also not privy to so much. So, yeah, I like how she said we're only commenting and speculating what we see in the public. There's things that we just don't see or hear. That's that's the way it goes. There's celebrities; they have a private life too. So we don't see and hear everything. We can only speculate and build what we see publicly through interviews, whatever video footage, yeah. uh, it, uh, social media posts. Uh, but yeah, great stuff. Yeah. It was well done, Celeste. That's that's a sp an area of knowledge that we honestly don't know if we would have actually no uh, been able to know that, and uh, and we wouldn't have been ready for this video a year ago. Yep. No, it was perfect so, timing. Perfect Celeste timing. was waiting. She's the best. Well, Nathan, I think that's it. That's our last One Direction uh, video we'll ever do. So awesome! Thank you, everyone. Thank you for watching <laughs> us, and uh, that completes our One Direction journey. <laughs> yes, it completes it. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> all right thanks everyone who watched us live we appreciate it you guys are amazing if you watched us after we were live on our patreon it doesn't matter everyone who sees this video we're patrons who actually support us financially nathan so thank you everyone who does that we really appreciate it thank you so much